If you prefer seated exercises, this video is for you. We will give you an expert insight on the worst to best seated exercises you should be performing. That's right. So seated exercises are great options for someone with notable weakness if you're unstable on your feet or you just wake up in the morning and you're not ready to stand up and do your exercises yet. That's right. Now, I have notable experience with this. I was a, a senior living community that I created uh, exercise seated for a group of them. I would come in once a month and watch them do their exercises and modify and change it so it worked good for them. I'm taking that information that's still in my head. It's, I, I still got it there. And we're going to show it to you and give you the worst to best exercises so you can have fun doing exercises. And, and so will we, huh, Mike? You created the whole community for them to live in? Well, no, I didn't do that. Oh. Come on. That's what it sounded like. <laughs> Before we get into the exercises, there are two things we want to mention. First is to perform the exercises in a stable chair of sorts. You do not want to do these in a recliner. They promote bad posture and are over cushioned. So nice, firm surface, good chair. Okay. The next thing is also if you're unstable in your chair, Armrest can be a really good idea for stability, uh, and you'll see it works good for some of the exercises. So the next thing is make sure your feet are not dangling. If you're a shorter person or you have a taller chair and your feet are dangling, that is no good. What you may want to do is put a couple books underneath or simply use a cushion like I have here so you have a place where your feet can comfortably rest. 90 degree bend in this knee, 90 degree bend in your hips like this so you're up tall with good posture. Okay, we're gonna talk about the eight exercises now. We're gonna go from worst up to best. The first one we're gonna talk about is seated marching. This works your hip flexors. Now this isn't inherently a bad idea, but look at this limited range of motion I have. I'm going from a 90 degree bend slightly up. I'm only probably getting 30 degrees of flexion. If you look at this in a standing position, look how much more range of motion there is to strengthen. So seated exercises, do they strengthen your hip flexors? Sure. Or are they as adequate as standing ones? No. And actually, in exercise number eight, we're going to show you a nice option with that. Actually, does work well, but there's a few things you need to do specific for it. All right. Now, the next exercise that's okay to do, but it's not real beneficial, is doing hip abduction in a seated position, which you simply go out to the side. Nothing wrong with it, but if you're able to stand and do hip abduction and maybe hold on to your walker, a chair, a wall, or if you can do it without, that's going to offer much more functional activity and strength to your hips. So again, do this. If that works for you, if you want to do something more aggressive or more beneficial, weight bearing or standing would be the best way with that. The next exercise we're going to show is arm tricep push-ups using a chair. Now Brad can do these better in his chair because he has armrests. I do not, but maybe you don't have them. So I'm going to put my hands on the seat pans like this and I'm going to extend my elbows out working my triceps. Again, does it work my triceps? Sure. Am I getting very much range of motion doing it like this? No. The tricep fully goes in a flex position to a straightened position. Look how much range of motion that is. Look how little range of motion I have right here. I got like 20%. That's a good point, Mike. However, you're also working the shoulder complex, which is a really nice thing for pushing up off an armrest. But again, you do need armrest, firm chair to do this. And this is really the best way to do this in my mind for a seated position here. Put your legs out here, and now the heels are kind of the pivot point, and you're going to push up as far as you feel comfortable and simply back down like this and back down. Do as many as you can, up to 10. You don't need to do more than 10. Now, if you only can do two or three and you've had enough, that's okay. Work with day after day. If you can do 10 easily, you can bring your feet in here and see if you can lift your body weight up. Not many people are going to do that. If you can do that, you probably want to buy some dumbbells. All right, this next exercise is not a strengthening one, but a range of motion or a stretch for your trunk. And it's a really functional one for stretching your body so you can look behind you if you're driving or just in the house to see who's behind you. We're going to rotate. And this armrest can be really helpful. You can actually grab them and give a little stretch, look behind you. This one is really critical. It is a pain-free range of motion. If you do this and it creates any sharp pain, avoid it. Just do gentle range of motion. You can go right 
and left and do that 10 times, or you can just do one side five times more if you would like, and then do five to 10 times the other way. Really nice. It's important that you're up as tall as you can and you're not slouched doing it because that really locks up the spine and creates problems. Good posture, rotation right and left. Mike, any comments on that one? If you can do it standing, you might get a little more rotation out of it, but make sure you feel balanced. The next exercise is going to work your quads as well as your calves a little bit. So you're going to be seated in the upright position and you're going to simply kick your leg out like this. Now once you're straight like this, you're going to do some ankle pumps. Try to do three of them. So toes towards your nose and away. You will feel your calf stretching and activating. <laughs> Go back down. Do it on the other side. We're going to do 10 repetitions on each side. Now you might notice one side's a little tighter. Give that side mm. a, a little extra love. But it really makes your quads work if you're holding it up here the whole time right. while you're kicking out. This is a little bit more engaging than just the standard kicks like this. Right. And another thing as far as walking, if you do this and you pull up to stretch that quad, you're strengthening this muscle. If you happen to have your foot drag or your toes I drag on the force floor slightly. This is a good way to help your walking so you don't have that, minimizing your risk for falls. All right, the next exercise. This one we referred to earlier as not a good exercise for the hip, but we're going to use this for abdominal strengthening these muscles here. And you simply start by doing the knee, one knee up and then down, and then you can work the other knee. Now this works the hips, but again, we're mostly thinking about abdominal strength. So you can actually feel here and feel those abdominal muscles tighten up as you bring your knees up. Do five to 10 on each side. Now when this becomes too easy and you wanna make it a little bit more challenging, now this, it's a good firm chair. Get to the edge of the chair a little bit. It works best if you have armrests, Good posture, and this will challenge your abdominals. Mike is in shape, young, and just a strong like bull kind of guy. He's just holding it up for seconds. When you start, it's probably going to be up and then down fairly quickly. If you can just get both feet off the ground and back down, you're going to feel those muscles really kick in, and that's why I'm grunting a little bit here. So you may start out with only two or three of these, and then you can go back down to add the single knee raising or to this. After a few weeks, you probably will get to the point where you can do five to 10 of these. At that point, you do not need to do the single ones if you don't want to and save some time. All right, let's go to the next one. Mike, do you have any additions with that? You're doing great on this. If you're a little weak and compensating like me, you're gonna notice you'll probably start to lean back a little bit when yeah. you're doing this. Oh, another point. Make sure your chair is flat. If you've got one of the chairs like Micah's, it dips down a little bit. A little harder. <laughs> They're not so good for exercises like this. Okay, the next stretch is great for your posture, and what you're going to do is scoot your bottom back in the chair, and you're going to raise your arms up above you while you're putting a little arch in your back Ooh. and going back like this, and you can say some nice words if you would like, and then come back down. Now, if you want a little more stretch, you can take some sort of ball. We have a kickball here, a little deflated. Put it behind my back. You can use a rolled up towel or pillow as well. Do the same stretch, and you'll just get a little bit more Mobility, mobility in your back. You can put it lower or higher, whatever feels good. Now, Mike is being modest because as far as Bob and I know, he's the one who invented this ball behind the back, hallelujah, stretch. It really emphasizes it. You do not want to start with the ball right away because it's fairly aggressive, but you can build up to it. You could also use a throw pillow. It may be a little easier and comfortable at first and do the exact same thing. And breathing is critical on this exercise. When you go back, breathe in. And exhale as you come back down. This is a great mobility for the shoulders, the back, the posture. You just can't go wrong with the hallelujah stretch. Right, Bob? That's right. And if you have one uh -huh. bad shoulder, you can hook your hands together and do what you comfortably can as well. That's right. Good luck on this one. It's definitely a game changer. 
All right, and here we are to the best exercise in a seated position. Now, this is a little bit stretching it that it's a seated exercise, but it's very important. It's gonna work large muscle groups and functional ones if you do stand up and are able to. If you're not able to stand at all, you may be able to do this with the assist of one person holding onto your belt line or your uh, side so that you're stable. It's simply sit to stand and back down. If you are unstable but not too bad, you may put a walker, if you use a walker, put that in front of you so when you get up, you can grab the walker or simply have a cupboard in front that's stable. That's a very safe way to do it with the chair behind and back down. So as you can see, like you may find it easier to go lean forward, which is a good idea. Nose over toes, we call that in the therapy world. It helps you stand up, changes your weight, center of gravity makes it easier and back down. As you get stronger, try to do it more straight up, strengthening those muscles. Mike, do you have some tips for these people? If you are unable to stand up on your own, you can use a band to strengthen your legs in a similar way. So I have a loop band. Brad has a different style band. Whatever you have at home for resistance will work. You're going to loop it around one leg. Get the band nice and taut. And then you're going to flex your knee and extend. You're not going to feel anything when your knees come in your chest. But when you push out, mm. you're going to get a good amount of resistance. And this will help strengthen the glute, hamstrings, calves, the whole leg, which will help with sit the stands to try to do 10 repetitions on each leg. If you want to advance that, you could do both legs at the same time and you're really going to get some trunk and abdominal strengthening. It's a big difference between this and this. Do whatever works best for you. Good. Now all these, rep all these uh, exercises, 10 repetitions is a good rule of thumb with them. You can do more or less depending on uh, how it feels for you. All right, if you already have a seated exercise program, I hope this information was helpful so you can improve or modify your exercises you're doing. If you don't have one, you can actually use these exercises, work with them, do the, one, do the ones that work best for you, increase your repetitions, and you're going to feel a difference and improvement on your strength. I almost stumbled on my words. Mike? If you want to check out more videos on seated exercises you can do, click on the video link on the screen. Excellent, excellent work right there. Hopefully it's on there. Hopefully it's the right one. <laughs> Bob and Brad, the two most famous physical therapists on the internet.